Hi everyone, I'm Jenny and I'm a PhD student at the University of Oxford in the Computational Health Informatics Lab. Today I'll be talking to you about one of my projects which deals with achieving algorithmic fairness through adversarial training. I'll be talking about this in the context of a clinical case study, however the technique discussed here can be applied to many different fields. To start, I'll introduce the bigger problem that we're trying to solve, which is using artificial intelligence or AI for COVID-19 diagnosis. Typically, when patients think they may have COVID-19, they'll pre present to hospital emergency departments, and there they'll go through symptom-guided evaluation, get lateral flow testing, and sometimes be asked to get confirmatory PCR testing, which is considered as the gold standard for COVID-19 diagnosis. There are some issues with um, this process, however. Uh, for a symptom-guided evaluation, there's ambiguous common symptoms, there's a risk of infecting clinicians, and similarly for lateral flow testing, there's limited sensitivity, it can be uncomfortable, and there's again infection risk to the clinician who's actually taking the swab. In terms of PCR testing, it can have long turnaround times, sometimes up to 72 hours in certain hospitals, and it also requires special infrastructure and expertise to actually perform. To address these issues, we introduced an AI-based COVID-19 screening algorithm, which takes in routinely measured features, such as blood tests and vital signs, which are typically available within one hour of each patient presenting to the hospital. So the advantages of this is that it can be performed in real time, it has high sensitivity, there's no extra overheads, and there's no additional risk of exposing others. To create this screening model, we obtained data from four independent groups. This is good as we'll have a lot of data to train our models with, and we'll also be able to show the generalizability of our model as we can externally validate across multiple locations. As with lots of data, um, clinical data does have some issues. For example, there are inequities in health and healthcare that can be reflected in the data. The methods used to measure, record, and process data can encode biases. And there's also a challenge in collecting uniformly rich data across all categories and all demographic groups. And with respect to machine learning models, these models are susceptible to the biases that are present in data, biased data can reduce model performance, and it can also cause models to make unfair decisions. And here, by unfair decision, we refer to any outcome that is skewed towards particular demographic groups. When we plot our data, we can tell that our data is heavily skewed towards certain groups. For example, with respect to ethnicity, you can see we have a much higher number of white patients than any other demographic. And if a model learns these biases, it may perform poorly on underrepresented groups and also propagate existing healthcare inequities. Furthermore, when we use a data visualization technique called TISNI, we found that data collection, processing, organization methods can unintentionally encode biases. For example, here you can see that data can be clustered by hospital region, suggesting that the confounders that are um, hospital specific can actually bias the data. And if such biases are learned in training, the model won't generalize well when applied to new settings. So besides developing an effective COVID-19 screening model and validating our model across different settings, we also wanted to ensure that our model is unbiased towards ethnicity or hospital group. So we focused on something called bias mitigation under the assumption that it can improve model performance, create a stronger classifier, and also improve model fairness across different groups. To do this, we use something called adversarial debiasing, which is um, a debiasing technique that works on an algorithmic level. On the left, you see a standard neural network framework, and then on the right, you see an adversarial neural network framework, which instead of having just one predictor network for the main task, there's also an adversary network, which is trained in parallel and against the predictor network. So in general, our goal is to train P, our predictor, to predict COVID-19 effectively, regardless of the label of Z. And here, Z represents either patient ethnicity or hospital group. So in simpler terms, we want P to accurately predict Y and A to poorly predict Z. That way, we'll, we'll have shown that we can train a strong predictor that isn't biased or correlated to the, um, the variable Z, which is in our case, patient ethnicity or hospital group. To do this, we use the following loss function. So LP is the loss of the predictor network and LA is the loss of the adversary network. 
alpha represents the degree of debiasing that we want to perform. And then the middle term is um, ensuring that when we start training, the loss function will propagate in the correct direction. So our goal is to have a small loss for P and a large loss for A. And you can see that they're being pitted against each other with the negative sign in front of the uh, loss of A. To evaluate the fairness of our models, we use the statistical definition of equalized odds, equalized odds, which states that a classifier is fair if true positive rates are equal and false positive rates are equal across all possible labels of the protective variable. Um, since we're using multi-class variables uh, for Z, we use the variance of true positive and false positive scores to determine fairness. Um, and the idea is that values closer to zero suggest greater fairness outcome. Here are some results, um, starting with et the ethnicity debiasing task. What you see on the right side is um, results for COVID-19 performance, which is the main task we're aiming to achieve, and then also equality of odds, which is determining the fairness of our models with respect to ethnicity. And we show results um, after being tested on all four hospital groups independently. What we find here is that when we compare both basic and adversarial results, they perform similarly and high, um, highly for COVID-19 prediction, but with respect to equalized odds, the adversarial model predicts, um, performs much more fairly, as you can see with the bolded um, results representing the best results. We found similar results with respect to the hospital debiasing task. And here again, you can see that both the basic and adversarial models perform similarly in terms of COVID-19 prediction. However, the adversarial model is much more fair. Here you see combined sites rather than results for each of the four sites, because when we trained for this task, we had to train on all the sites together. So to conclude, we've demonstrated that adversarial debiasing is a powerful technique for mitigating biases. Um, specifically, we showed that we can improve outcome fairness without compromising performance of the task at hand. The framework shown can be applied to many different tasks and protected features and can be used with different types of models. There are some limitations, including that our data was skewed with respect to the protected features and using balanced data has been shown to have a much stronger effect um, on adversarial training. There's ambiguity in certain categories for ethnicity, namely unknown, mixed and other. And for a lot of biological tasks, there's great difficulty in understanding how social, behavioral, and genetic factors independently and collectively impact outcomes. So overall, the takeaway message that I wanna to give to you guys is that the ability to develop fair models will encourage hospitals to adopt machine learning technologies and inspire greater confidence in its reliability for making critical decisions. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I'd like to thank the team at Oxford, the patients and staff across the four participating hospital trusts, my funders, and also I want to sincerely thank you, the organizers and sponsors of this event for giving us a platform to share our research.